Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday, February 17th, and we're gonna do another daily message. Earlier today, I um, gave my cards some Reiki. So I'm on week two healing post attunement to Reiki, the universal healing life force. Sorry, universal life force, Reiki, an ancient Japanese healing modality. I actually just made a video, or I just recorded a video. I don't know if it's posted yet somewhere here um, about that if you want to hear about what that's like at this point but anyway I I gave the card some energy I gave the stone some energy and we're gonna get into this reading and just see what happens as we do any messages for the collective today Joy and delight. Open your heart to joy. Yes. Traveling lightly. Simplify your life. Minimalism. Minimalist dream right here is what's happening. Great adventure. Take a risk. Venture forward. Yep. I mean, literally traveling lightly. This is giving me like backpackers sort of backpacking through Europe. Backpacking like... There's a great sense of freedom to these cards. Stepping into power underneath, okay. Open your heart to joy, simplify your life, take a risk and venture forward. This is such a freeing, such a freeing spread. Let's see what this is about. Do you feel this? The Three of Cups is the energy underneath. And this was literally the card underneath when I did my personal reading as well. So the Three of Cups is the card of celebration. It's about sharing yourself with others, like being an emotionally safe place. This is about joy and community and also communing with spirits I'll say all right what else we got queen of cups in reverse judgment in reverse two of swords in reverse two of wands the hermit in reverse nine of cups the moon four of pentacles five of wands in reverse Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's almost like, um, I'll say this. Conflict is showing up here, but it's the energy of coming out of conflict. Um, there is some planning needing to be done around something that is unknown or hidden to you. So yeah, like how do you do that? How do you plan for something that which is unknown? I sense that there is like a lot of, um, I don't want to say nervousness, but the Queen of Cups in reverse, remember she showed up yesterday and I feel like she's shown up a lot. It's when our emotions can get the better of us, our cups are out of whack, our emotions are flooding our nervous system. You can't plan when um, fear or nervousness or, you know, is, um, taking over. So instead of focusing on fear, focus on joy and delight. Open your heart to joy. I know that's very hard to do just to like turn it off and be like, nope, I'm going to be grateful for this now. Nope, I'm going to be fine right now. <laughs> Like, it's really hard to just turn that on when there's things to worry about, right? Traveling lightly then to me is like releasing emotional baggage, honestly. There's a crossroads here and someone is not sure where to go. Um, I'm noticing there's a lot of purple here in the center and then there's red here at the bottom in this column. I mean, that just sort of, the all of a sudden I saw like a chakra sort of like system 
<laughs> in this middle row here under traveling lightly. So what do you need to release? Where do you need to release in your body? I feel like there is a call to come out of the lower stuff, you know, and come more into like a higher vibration of um, in, in like the third eye and the crown where it's more nebulous and ethereal and sort of um, intuitive versus in the body feeling of fear. It's almost like there's like some sort of survival instinct coming up or something like that. But I feel like you've, you've, you've been learning how to address these things. It's just that sometimes when it becomes overwhelming, again, we have to remind ourselves that we have to let it go. You got to let it go. Travel lightly. It says simplify your life. When there's too much to do, too much going on, this overwhelm, again, this feeling of overwhelm. Joy and delight, traveling lightly. These are the messages that, that Spirit's trying to point you to while you're dealing with all this other stuff, apparently. And now in the future, we have the Two of Swords in reverse, the Nine of Cups, and then the Five of Wands in reverse. Here's where we see this like coming out of conflict. Five of, five of Wands... The message of that card in general to me is sort of like white noise. It's people's opinions. It's words. People's words. It's not conflict like fighting. Like them's fighting words. But also like not true harm. I feel like once we can um, understand conflict or confrontation more as... Um, something that happens when we communicate authentically uh, and less like somebody trying to harm us, you know, that's when we, I think, can get over this, um, whatever is happening here with this overwhelm, okay? It says, take a risk, venture forward. I feel like it's saying, like, put yourself out there. Don't carry the past burdens with you, whatever your, um, again, preconditioned notions might be about a situation that you're dealing with. What wants to come through is joy and delight. It really wants you to focus on this good thing that is coming or that is already here and available to you. I feel like whatever it is, it's something you've been either dreaming or fantasizing about, um, but have not been able to see the way forward two of swords the two of swords in reverse is the same card from um valentine's day no easy way forward no clear way forward or the lesser of two evils as in no matter what you choose it's a difficult path but the that's part of the adventure what's driving this decision are, is your dreams, this thing that you've always wanted that's available to you, if you simply release the idea that by you wanting this, like there's going to be things in your way, but maybe it's like you're in your own way a little bit by not sitting in your joy, not sitting in the idea that you can delight in your own life and not take on burdens that aren't yours. Let's clarify since, since that was a thing. Okay. Uh, first of all, show me, um, show me the two of swords. Six of cups, 10 of pentacles, king of pentacles. Wow. So this might have something to do with your past something, remember I said preconditioned sort of things here. Six of Cups in reverse is, again, the, it's like nostalgia, but like clinging too much to the past of how things used to be and not how they can be. But what wants to come through, the decision is, is breaking the threshold into your, I'll say, legacy and stability, your family, your kinship, your, your tradition. It's almost, this is almost saying like make a new tradition. Don't just relive the old ones. 
especially if there's pain or overwhelm there. Like, don't return to your trauma. I think you can... It's, it wants to be overcome here. Travel lightly. Don't bring it with you. Don't bring it with you. Um, what's the hermit about? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. We have the world, the five of pentacles, and the king of wands. The world is a reminder that the world has changed. You have changed. You're not going back. There's a, the threshold has been crossed, is what I'm getting. It is also about being sort of like one with everything. So you need to sort of remember with the Hermit in reverse and then seeing the world card, the message is sort of like everything that is inside of you that you've learned in your wisdom needs to be brought out. The, the message is to let it out. So this could be let it out that which you have been carrying emotional baggage or it could mean uh, let it out as in you might have some sort of special skill or honestly information, some really key information around how to turn this situation around or something. Because then we have five of pentacles in reverse. This is coming out of scarcity. So the deliverance of something that is needed is what I'm getting. And the King of Wands in reverse. I feel like there's, let me get one more. That was an answer if you saw one. Let's get it. Five of Swords. Okay, well, I guess that sort of answers. Yeah, it does answer. Um, you're going to be delivering something, some, some kind of information in the present moment that allows you to release this baggage and travel lightly. The problem is that there's somebody in your energy field, could be a fire sign, Sag, Leo, Aries, um, or they just have some like fire in their chart and they don't I don't think that they really like what you're doing. The Five of Swords is, okay, you've won the war, but at what cost? Somebody always loses. When we set healthy boundaries, for example, like, sometimes people are, are understanding, but you know that there's always going to be people who just, like, don't get it. This is the energy of this. Is like the King of Wands is somebody who's, like, looking at... Who, because who would respond to coming out of scarcity with this sort of like manipulative energy? The negative energy, the low energy of the King of Wands, when it's showing up in the reverse, is like either a lack of passion, a distaste, um, or manipulation. And then the Five of Swords is, is saying that, yeah, someone feels like they're not. They're not getting what they need. Like someone's getting what they need, but somebody isn't. So this can feel like winners and losers. Let's look at, let's do one more clarification. I know this is like, this one got weird, but Wow, a lot of kings. We've got the Fool, the King of Cups, and the King of Swords. So, I'll just say this. The new way forward, whatever precondition is being dealt with here, the way to joy and delight, traveling lightly, it has to be done in a way that is heart-centered to avoid this distasteful sort of like manipulative energy. And I say manipulative, but I don't really mean that. I mean like
you want to sidestep toward your aims here. And this is going to be a brand new thing they're going to do. The Fool is here to show that this is, again, a brand new journey. The world and the Fool show up. So this is the threshold of from doing things an old way to doing things in a new way. Um, and I will say this, that the, you know, this is not a warning or a precaution or anything. I'm just saying, okay, like from experience, the people who don't want to see you grow and change and make boundaries are the people who in some ways are benefiting from your stagnation. And that's what I'm seeing here. So if you want to keep this person in your life or whatever energy situation you're dealing with, like you can choose to have compassion for the situation or, you know, keep your cards close to your chest. Um, but definitely, definitely don't um, try to be, um, don't, don't buy into this, like, winners and losers thing. Don't buy into um, any sort of guilt tripping. Don't buy into um, King of Swords in reverse, you know, like, intellectualizing you know, the decisions you're making as you're growing and changing and, and you're on this great life adventure. I think everyone just wants to um, enjoy their life as best they can. And sometimes that is through uh, making decisions to move. We, we move from thing to thing, you know. This could be a relationship. This could be a work situation. It could be, right, like a career. We're like, we're moving on now. Thank you. I got a better thing. Uh, but whatever it is, it's there's a a really awesome feeling of this simplifying your life, like choosing to do just a few number of things that really focus in on what makes you feel really good. Um, any energy that's coming in that doesn't support that, I see it being... Um, cast aside. And that's why I think there's like this winners and losers. Like people might feel cast aside when you decide to pursue your dreams. It's not a bad thing. I think it's just um, you're trying to tap into your joy that is leading to a new kind of stability for you in your life as well as, again, the Ten of Pentacles is awesome. It's it's tradition and, and family and kinship. It's like finding your people, finding your purpose again. So, hey, that's awesome. I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.